And that takes us to the second phase of the animal uh, mating cycle, which is courtship. Now, in this phase, uh, the animals negotiate um, the terms and conditions that will finally lead to copulation. And there's three reasons why a female would agree to have sex. The first reason is instinct, primary reason they know that they have to help their species to survive. So far, so clear. The second reason is that, in the animal kingdom at least, females actually enjoy sex. Yeah. yeah. And the third reason is that a female would agree to having sex with another female or a male in exchange for something that is of value to her. And you're smiling, but it's actually quite common in the animal kingdom. It's so common, in fact, that science have coined a term for this behavior. It's called prostitution. <laughs> and we can find out a lot more about prostitution with another round of... Spot hey, 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 hey. <laughs> You have to wait till I go. No, otherwise, there's a camera. Okay, so we can learn a lot more about prostitution with another round of... Spot the pervert! Spot the pervert! Right, so, for animals, we know the theme is what? Prostitution. Prostitution. Prostitution, so that's easy. Now, the four animals. Eolumpis jugularis, the carib hummingbird. Giraffa camelopardalis, the African giraffe, Pigocheles ardelia, the elderly penguin, and Macaque fascicularis, the long-tailed macaque. Now, we know the theme is prostitution, so it's your job to spot the pervert and tell me which of these animals is not a whore. <laughs> well, they're not, they're not all at the same time. Hummingbird, Peter, hummingbird. Why would you say it's the hummingbird? They choose partners. They choose partners. Well, they choose partners. That's my guess. It's your guess. Um, it's a it's a very good guess, and they, they look like a happy couple, but they are <laughs> probably not. Hummingbirds were actually the first species where we have uh, proof have discovered prostitution, uh, because we, up to then it was thought that only men, uh, only we humans, uh, in, indulge in it, as it were. <laughs> So what it is that the male hummingbird protects the most juiciest flowers in his habitat and he only grants access to a female in exchange for a little favor. <laughs> you know, fair swap, access to a juicy flower in exchange for access to another juicy flower. Okay, <laughs> so it's not the hummingbird. Shara, show me. You think the penguins because they're made for life. They do mate for life, and it's a mystery to science, because they all look the same. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're also a very old and well-known species for prostitution, and we can see here what it actually is. You see that female picking up a stone? They need stones to build nests to shield the young from the icy winds of the Arctic. But Antarctica is ice, so it's very hard to come by stones. So the females of this species have long ago discovered that it's a lot easier to go and pick up a stone from the pile that the males have collected in exchange for a little favor. And some of these birds are so good at this, you know, that they get away with nine stones for one ride <laughs> in this coldest profession on earth. <laughs> right, so it's 50-50 now. Giraffa camelopardalis. Anyone know why it's called camelopardalis? Tell me. You should know this. Perfect answer. Uh, Tell me. Uh, oh, no, okay. you wouldn't let me down. Big round of applause for Tammy, the, the, the textbook answer. And, and she just made it up from the Latin. Yes, so the Romans believed that the camel was a cross between, uh, sorry, that the giraffe was a cross between a camel and a leopard. Because <laughs> it has the fur markings of the leopard and the eyelashes of a camel. Pliny the Elder, if you want to read anything that is interesting but completely wrong, go and find books of Pliny the Elder. He made it all up. 
Um, any candidates for the giraffe to be the pervert? Me, giraffe. You think it's the giraffe, Edward? Why would you think it's the giraffe? I don't know what's in window four. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Did I not say this? Window, window four. Yeah, this, this is window seven. <laughs> window, window four is the um, long tail macaque. Oh, sorry. It's, 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 it's a monkey. It's an Asian, Asian monkey. Is that? Yeah, it's actually we see four monkeys here, kind of gro Horse. grooming each other. Horse! That's a brothel. That's a proper monkey brothel. If ever I've seen one, that's the one. So, Edward, come back to the giraffe. You yeah. still think it's a giraffe or you want to swap for the monkeys? No, I'll stick with the giraffe. You stick with the giraffe and you'd be right. That's Round of applause for Edward. You'd be right. It's the giraffe. But let me tell you about the monkeys because it's fascinating. Because they have you know, being, being genetically close to us men, obviously made the whole prostitution thing a bit more interesting. They have developed it to a level that is amazing. It works like a market economy. So what it is, they treat, they, they trade massage for sex. So uh, the males give the female the massage, and the longer the massage, the longer they're allowed to ride the female. Pretty nice. Eh? And it also has the law of demand and supply, because the more females are around, the lower they're <laughs> yeah, so the answer is, is all of them are hobos, with the exception of the giraffe. Which and there's a very... Sorry? Which one is more clever? Which one is more clever in... Four. Out of the four, the cleverest animal out of the four would be um, the macaques. Oh, okay. So that they can probably open your fridge. <laughs> uh, the hummingbird... <laughs> the penguin... <laughs> unless it's built of stone. Um, yeah, so there's, there's a very logical reason for why the giraffe is because um, for a female giraffe it's actually quite dangerous to be pregnant. At the end of pregnancy they carry around an extra 60 to 70 kilograms. So obviously they, they become easy prey for, for any predator. Right? So the female hates the sex, literally hates sex. The male, if he wants it, has to run after her for hours and sometimes even days. And even then, if she's not up for it, he'll get a bloody good kick in the balls. No joke. Look it up. Right. And obviously, that's not nice for us men. You know, it, we have to suffer, but male giraffes really have to suffer. Um, so they've come up with the most extraordinary mating routine that we know of. It's called the flea man sequence. And you can see it on this picture here. What it is, is the man, the male, nuzzles the anus of the female. And that induces the release of liters of urine, of which he scoops up a good mouthful, swirls it around, and by taste and smell, he can tell whether or not she's up for it. I wonder, yeah, and I wonder if that works if she had asparagus for lunch. Whoa, that's my best giraffe asparagus joke. Oh, write your own. Female giraffes are so difficult that nine out of ten copulations are male to male. I was going to ask about homosexuality. They're the most, yeah, they're, 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 they're fruitier than the fruit bed. <laughs> the fruit of the loom. No, they Yes, um, so, now. Is it a shame? Is it a shame? John, who is it? You said chain. Sorry, what's your name? Uh, there's someone hiding in the chain. Are, are you the fire hazard? Are you the built-in fire hazard in this room? Hello, what's your name? Sia. Sia. Sorry, what did you shout? I said chain. Chain. Oh, for the giraffe. It's not by choice, obviously. Yes. Would you like to offer some relief? No. I wouldn't know what that looked like. Um, Yes, so, but obviously oh, oh, it's a very direct way of communicating and obviously they're quite successful with this because all these species are still on the planet. But uh, it's very hard to take this in as advice for ourselves, you know. I cannot just go to a park and protect a line of flowers and wait for the most beautiful girl to come by and say, I'd give you one here. I cannot just pick up a rock and say, you wouldn't mind spreading your legs a little bit. Unless it's, yeah, I, no, I haven't, but no me Campbell has, pretty much. No, so, so we unfortunately have to go through the rigmarole that we call dates, right? Um, you're a couple, I don't know, have you been together long? 
Enough? Is, is there, do you, do you actually remember how <laughs> long? About a year and a half. A year and a half? Wow, that's more than dating? I, you're still dating? Yeah. I'm, I'm after Christmas, you know? I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> Surviving the Christmas, oh, we're going to your parents first, and then doggy style, and then to my parents, and doggy style. And... Oh, yes. Um, excellent. One and a half years. Do you... Just because it's the theme, do you remember his come online? <laughs> Straight away! You don't need this lecture. Peter, you can wait downstairs. Really? He came up to you and said, Would no, you like. Just come up to me. We've been enjoying an evening together. Without any words being said, and then he just taps you on the shoulder. Would you like to. Beautiful adjectives. <laughs> And then next morning, Peter, by the way, <laughs> you're that kind of girl. <laughs> and I'm flying out on Thursday. Now you're telling me, do you have a sister? Um, so so that, that's a very good common line. That's actually brave and, and successful. So being direct can be successful. Um, okay, do you also remember where you went uh, on your first date? Did you go? You, you probably didn't even go through dating, right? Don't be dating now. Yeah, you're dating, but it, it's not that, you know, so, so dating and courtship is, is this, uh, texting, does she like me, she calls me back, uh, cinema, ice cream, yeah, yeah. <laughs> talk, talk, talk. No, no, no. No, you didn't go through it. Amazing! Oh my God, brilliant! Do we have anyone in the room who remembers a very nice first date? What, what would be your advice for a first date with a South African woman? Someone I haven't talked to tonight. Hello, what's your name? Lynn. 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 Are you a couple? Yes. Yes, what's your name, sir? <laughs> <laughs> hey, could we, could we brother and sister in Sweden or something? Anxiety. Anxiety, yeah. So what's your name? Tom. Tom. Lynn and Tom. Okay, so you're a couple? Do you remember where you went on the first date? Yeah. Wait, where did you it was long after we'd been together, but we then had a first date. <laughs> 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 we haven't had one, so we have to have one. You had to have one? Good. And was it with all the texting? Or? It was like, um, we took a car and then we went away. And then wow. Then we just, yeah. Yeah. But that's after we'd already been seeing each other. Yes. <laughs> Another round of applause for Lynn and Tom. <laughs> so. I, I told you, I have a daughter, right? And, and their date is like, Oh, it's the ice rink or something. <laughs> they come home all, you know, red cheeks and happy about it. Girl, I should buy her an open top car that might actually bring her.